Welcome to this Innovise training video. In this video, we are continuing the Influenter Pro Quick Start tutorial. This is video number three, where we are modifying network elements. In this video, we're gonna cover a few basic things. Uh, we're gonna be looking at the auto link calculation, how to turn that on or off, uh, how to modify an element's geometry, which includes redrawing pipes, editing pipe vertex points, as well as moving a node element. Uh, then also how to edit a single element that's generally done in the Model Explorer, and then editing multiple elements, how you can use the database editor to do that. Uh, if you still don't have your model open that we're using for the tutorial, go ahead and open it now. Um, we are going to be, once again, going to the preferences. Uh, which is on the Infowater Pro ribbon right near the initialize button. Uh, the auto link calculation is on the tab that comes up directly. That's the operation settings tab. Uh, and it's the first checkbox in the upper left. Uh, normally in most models, you will keep this open uh, because those models have a spatial projection. Everything is laid out one foot equals one foot or one meter equals one meter or whatever your your uh, spatial projection units are. Uh, however, in this sample model, uh, it's kind of a special case. So in this case, we're going to be turning that off. But uh, just so you know where that is, uh, we'll do that. Uh, when it is checked on, uh, pipe lengths will be recalculated whenever a pipe is redrawn or connected nodes are moved or there's something that asks the, the model to recalculate pipe links. Uh, so let's show you that real quickly. So again, I've got my tutorial model and I've already initialized it. So my red button is grayed out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open my preferences. Uh, in this one, it should be checked. Uh, I think I uh, had this uh, uncheck because I was looking at something, but what they want you to do for this is just to make sure that is unchecked. Once you do, go ahead and hit OK. Um, that will uh, basically have that ready for us to do the next steps that they want us to do. Uh, now, uh, without changing the pipe links that were entered when we were adding them in the last step covered in the last video. Uh, so the first thing they want you to do, uh, you know, is that, and then let's go back to our slides really quick. Um, cause we're going to cover how to edit element geometry, and then I'll show you what we're doing there. So under the edit menu, there's a little drop down box that has several options. Uh, the top three are what we're going to cover right now, uh, and that is the move node, the edit vertex, and redraw pipe. All those commands can be found there. Uh, so to redraw pipe, you're going to first of all choose that redraw pipe tool uh, that's right there. Uh, uh, and then you're going to select the pipe that you want to redraw. That will flash the pipe in this kind of a cyan selected color. The pipe that flashes is the pipe that is going to get redrawn. So if it's not the pipe that you want to redraw, make sure you select that pipe uh, before you go on to the next steps. Once that pipe is selected, when you single click at a node, it's going to start the pipe redraw. If you single click anywhere along there, it's going to add a vertex. And then when you're near a node and you double click, that will finish the pipe. Um, the edit vertex tool is kind of handy, especially if you've got a pipe with a complicated curve on it. So there's just a lot of vertex points. You don't want to redraw it, uh, but sometimes you just want to move a few points you can edit the vertices on that pipe to adjust it. Uh, you Again, you'll select the pipe uh, and that will make that pipe a cyan color that should stay. And you can see the vertex points that are there. They'll usually initially show up in white. If you double click on the pipe where there's not a vertex, it will add a new vertex. That new vertex is generally gonna be a green color. The green vertex point can be selected 
and while holding down your left mouse button, you can move that vertex point. Uh, also, if you ever wanted to delete that vertex point, you can delete the green one by just using the delete key on your keyboard uh, to do that. And then it'll then select the next nearest vertex point, which you can either move or delete as needed. Uh, similar to that is the move node tool. Um, they've made this a little simpler, uh, where now uh, you just select the node, and as you move your mouse, a dashed line from that point will appear. When you click again, it's going to move the node there. You don't need to hold down your left mouse button anymore to do that. So let's go to the model and look at that. So in the tutorial, they want you to redraw this pipe that's right down here, pipe 76. So if we go under edit and we select redraw pipe, we can click on the pipe and you see how it flashed that cyan color. Uh, if you click on another pipe, it would make that uh, also that cyan color. But whichever pipe flashed like that, that's the pipe that's going to get redrawn. And so if you then, let's just zoom in a little bit here so it's a little bit easier to see. If I click on a junction, you can see that dash line that tells you that I am starting uh, the pipe. And if I single click, every single click is giving me a new vertex point. And so then if I'm on the junction, I just double clicked right there and then it redrew that pipe. Uh, it's pretty handy, pretty easy to do. Uh, that is very useful uh, to be able to do that. Uh, then if you need to edit a vertex on one of those pipes, so we can just again click on. I think I got stuck in the other tool there. Uh, so let me click on something else here. Boom, boom. There we go. So now let's edit this pipe. So let's say this vertex I wanted to move. I selected it and you can see that uh, if I'm holding down my left mouse button, I can move that to where I want to go. Be careful. Sometimes uh, you're not uh, clicking near enough that that won't always take, but that's pretty much what's there. If I wanted to delete the one that's green, I can use my delete key on the keyboard and then I can double click if I want to add a vertex point. And so pretty much you can edit any of those as you need them. That's pretty handy uh, that you can do that. Uh, allows you to pretty much do whatever you need to do to adjust a pipe. Uh, a lot of times you're doing that to make it follow a roadway where you know that it's located better uh, if you've got that imagery. And then lastly, if we wanted to move some nodes, like let's say down here when we added this node and this valve, we thought one of those was a little close or a little bit far, um, we can just select the node and you can see how it creates that dashed line. Wherever we move that, that is going to move that uh, node and the connected pipes to it. Uh, now, because we did, we had that uh, auto length calculation off, it did not recalculate these pipe lengths whenever we were moving that. So that's, since we entered those in, Manually, we did not want to change those, but that is essentially how you can uh, edit a pipe, redraw a pipe, edit the vertices, or move a node. And any of the point elements, so junctions, tanks, reservoirs, pumps, and valves, point elements, those are node elements that can be moved with that move node tool. And so that allows you to uh, do that whenever you uh, want to move something, change its location, you just use that move node tool to do so. So pretty handy and pretty useful that's there. As you go back now, and if we ever wanted to edit the attributes of a single element, uh, pretty much the easiest way to do that is to use the select tool that's that little white arrow to select an element and then find that attribute in the model explorer and edit it right there uh, 
generally that is pretty simple, pretty quick. Very nice that you be able to do that. Uh, pretty common thing that you will do uh, as long as it's the active element in the Model Explorer, you can edit any of the input fields. So it's pretty much everything except for the output uh, and change those that are there. Uh, that's pretty convenient for quick things. But if I had like 100 elements that I wanted to make the same change to, that's not so convenient. So there's another way to edit multiple elements, and that is essentially through the Database Explorer. And so the Database Explorer, that's also uh, an, a large icon on the Edit uh, section of the Importer Pro ribbon. You can open that, and it'll show you all the tables that can be edited. Uh, and pretty much the modeling section in the Model Explorer, those are going to be under the hydraulic data. The information section in the Model Explorer, you can see how there's modeling data, information fields. That's kind of how these are split up in here. So you can open the uh, junction information tables or the hydraulic tables. Those are the most common ones. Generally, people will do it. Once you open that table, um, you can either say, hey, open everything, or if I have a domain active, I can limit it. Uh, a user selection, many different ways to just limit which elements actually get edited, which is handy. Uh, once you're there, you can either select an entire column or a group of data and use the block editing tool, which gives you several options. Add, set equal to, subtract, multiply by, divide by, uh, auto augment, those are pretty handy. Most common ones people are generally using are either multiply, add, or set equal to. Uh, pretty handy, or even divide by, uh, but it's a very powerful tool. Uh, now, in the model that they have, uh, they uh, actually did not have you uh, uncheck in the tutorial, uncheck the links. Uh, but when we entered them in in the video, we we're actually overriding the links that were calculated manually. And so there's nothing to change. So if you see in the tutorial, they'll say, hey, make sure the pipe links match the links that were shown because we entered those in when we added the pipe. There's nothing that you'll need to edit. But let's just show you what they mean here. So like, let's say this one was 50 instead of one, uh, you can click on that uh, and it'll save that change. Now, generally, when you've got, there's an option for an auto save so that you don't have to hit that save button uh, that's on there, which is very handy uh, so that you've got that. But that's going to, that's under the preferences and it's this auto record saving uh, so that you don't need to hit that little save button uh, that's on there unless you want to, but generally that's going to save that for you and make those changes. But if you had all of those uh, links in the tables following the video like we did, all those will be correct, so there's nothing to really change. But you can go through here and let's say, you know, hey, this is in, uh, let's find one of the pipes here. This is what pressure zone one uh, so that we could edit, hey, this is in zone one. You know, click on another pipe if I wanted to change that. This is now in zone two. Uh, any of those kind of things, any of these attributes, if you need to change them, you can edit them here. Now, as I said, if you've got a lot of edits, that's not as convenient. And so uh, being able to go into the database editor, and like I said, these groups of tables, generally you're most of the time probably going to be editing the hydraulic data tables or the information data tables, they would like us to enter and adjust the roughness values for all pipes. So we're going to select the pipe hydraulic modeling data for the entire table and hit OK. Now you can see up here we've got length, diameter, roughness, minor loss, totalizer. These are essentially the same kind of fields that we were seeing in the Model Explorer. Uh, and we just want to select this and this tool right here is the block editing tool and they want us to basically add 10 to each value so if you see this is 125 125 125 when i hit add those all went up by 10 from whatever they were
before. Uh, now you'll notice all these check marks on the left that tells you, hey, something has changed, it's not saved yet. And then if I hit save, it saves all those changes and those go away. Uh, so pretty handy. Uh, you can also edit groups of ones. I'm right clicking here on that and I'm choosing block editing. And I could say, hey, subtract 10. And you see those went back down. Uh, that's pretty handy uh, to be able to do that, uh, to uh, either edit a group of elements or an entire column. Very useful, something that a lot of people use quite a bit. Uh, now let's get back to getting this guy centered and then we will save this. That's going to conclude what we're doing in video three. We're going to continue this uh, in uh, video number four. Thank you so much.